Okay, um, I want to remind you once again to read your bios in your folders and the statements out on the presenter boards. Those statements don't appear anyplace else except on the presenter boards, and they're very interesting. <clears throat> Our presenter this evening is Paul Helfrich. <clears throat> Paul is a musician, a composer, an essayist, a book reviewer, a film reviewer, among other films, and you can find this on his website. Uh, he's reviewed What the Bleep and The Secret. He's also inv an investigator into the big picture. <coughs> he ran a science museum. He knows Ken Wilbur and reviews his books. He's working on his own book, Integral Consciousness. And by integral, I think Paul means all human knowledge, or most of it. He and his wife, Joanne, are responsible for the New Worldview website. Chris Johnson mentioned this. It's a great source. Everyone here should know about the New Worldview uh, website. There is a lot of good information and a lot of links there. And Paul might tell us a little bit more about it. And there's also a place where you can contribute, and I'm sure that would be helpful. Paul has some things for sale on the back, uh, that back table back there, some CDs and some other, some books, and Joanne does. <clears throat> Last year, Paul gave us a wonderful presentation of his experiences with the Seth material and a history about the various Seth groups and activities that uh, have gone on and some of his personal research, what he has done and is doing. And here to bring us up to date is Paul Hilfrich. Well, till this comes on, I'll talk loud until this comes on. Uh, the first thing I want to do is just say how wonderful it is to be here this year and see familiar faces that I've seen over the last 11 years now at different Seth conferences. And as far as New World View goes, it's really a mom and pop shop at this point that Joanne and I run, but its lineage is traced back through Linda Dahl, Stan, uh, Stan Olkowski, Michael Stephan, Mary Rowan, uh, back to 1999. I can talk softer. Thank you. <coughs> Don't stand under the speaker. Just pull this back. So I just wanted to acknowledge the lineage that New World View represents now. Joe and I are sort of the figureheads, the front people with the spotlight on perhaps, but it wouldn't be possible without all of these other people, of course, Jane and Rob and everyone else who's been involved. And a lot of people in this room uh, actually have contributed to the library. There are 11 of us in this room of the 94 that have contributed articles that are permanently in the library that deal with conscious creation. Uh, I was going to read them off, but I don't have time. I have a lot to get through tonight. The other thing I wanted to say was that uh, when I talk, my intent, my purpose is really to raise more questions and provide answers. I do tend to have an intellectual approach, but at the end of the day, that only takes us so far and we have to directly experience the ideas as Helen Walker was talking about this morning. That's a very important part of what I hope to do as part of my talk anytime I talk to help motivate us all to uh, practice the ideas directly, personally, and perhaps motivate people to continue their practice, revisit their practice, and even strengthen whatever they're doing to put these ideas into practical use. All right, let's do it. Now, I know some of you can't see the bottom, and that's OK. Uh, this is sort of a road map of what I hope to get through in the next hour and leave about 15 minutes for questions at the end. So I'm not going to take questions. I'm going to just kind of riff and go through stuff and present ideas and whatnot. There will be some musical interludes again, which are just a chance to give the mind, body, soul, a chance to do whatever it needs to do, and then come back and engage, because I've got charts and cool pictures and things like that. So we're going to look at channeling, who, what, where. We're going to look at aspect psychology, Jane Roberts. We should do a Jane conference one of these years. Uh, I have a very strong heart connection with Jane. Melinda was asking me last night about that. 
I said, more so than Seth, I have a heart connection with Jane and Rob. Anyway, uh, then into the integral approach, I'm going to spend a little technical time going through Ken Wilber's model in a very broad introduction, and then try to tie it to the previous two, aspect psychology and channeling, and then finish up with a little bit on integral practice because it's important to uh, round that all out. So what is channeling? Well, I have a few definitions I want to read here. I'm going to try and read in the dark. And they're from scholars, uh, so they're, they're very carefully worded. Let's see if I can read in the dark here. This is from Michael Brown, who's an anthropologist. He defines channeling as the use of altered states of consciousness to contact spirits, or as many of its practitioners say, to experience spiritual energy captured from other times and dimensions. Sound okay, right, in the ballpark? This one's from Arthur Hastings, a transpersonal psychologist. It's a process in which a person transmits information or artistic expression that he or she receives mentally or physically and which appears to come from a personality source outside the conscious mind. The message is directed towards an audience and is purposeful. Oh, thank you, the lifesaver. Hello. And this is from our own, I can say that now, John Klimo, who was with us, a transpersonal paranormal psychologist. He defines it, uh, and this is from his 1988 definition, a process whereby someone appears to serve as a conduit for information, messages, and guidance, or for energy of a healing capacity or a spiritual quality which appears to come from a non-ordinary source. Now, scholars choose these words very carefully and there's, it covers a whole wide series of aspects that are involved in the channeling uh, phenomenon. I just wanted to make a point historically about channeling in this country. In the 19th century, there was a spiritualist movement. Uh, Harry Johnson talked about uh, the ectoplasm, which was a way cool connection from the spiritualist early 20s to Jane. Remember the waxy hand in uh, the very first, The Coming of Seth? Or, I think that's the book that it's from. But in the 19th century, there was more of a focus on channeling dead people uh, than there was Seth-like avatar, you know, teacher essences. So that's something that defines modern, scholars define modern channeling in terms of a, a difference from mediumship. So they're complementary modalities. And then we use a fancy word called ontology, which is being the nature of being, who we are, our self, and all that is in relation to all that is. And I just put the question out there, who is the you who channels and yet creates 100% of its reality? Now this is a beautiful image, a Buddhist icon. And it really covers a lot of ground. If we just look, you know, sort of isolate this part, well, there's the frontal self. There's, there's us, there's Paul Helfrich, represented visually right here. And yet, here are my other lifetimes simultaneously at my same sort of ontological state. And now we get the multiple arms. And this blew me away when I finally put this together about eight years ago. I walked into a store in Santa Barbara, a metaphysical store, and saw one of these beautiful bronze Shiva statues. And it's like, I made the connection that this represents essence, the, the source self, the entity that Seth talks about. So up here, perhaps that's that layer, the Seth layer, multiple, and even further inward, perhaps. Now, the Buddhists have these wrathful deities and, and sort of the, the destruction and birth a process represented. Notice the glow, the energetic aura around here. And up here is just pure Buddha mind, pure consciousness, the big CU. <laughs> <laughs> right? The, of which there is no second. These are hands, actually. This is by Alex Gray, I think. Uh, yes, this is an Alex Gray rendering. And these are hands with eyes on them. And any of you who do energy work know that there's energy centers, energy meridians in, in the palms. So this is an important question. Too soon. Hit page up. Page up. 
It's okay. No, she's ready. You're doing a great job. This is, this is a complex... <laughs> the voice told you to go. So the question, you know, who is channeling who from where? And, and there's different ways to look at this. Um, a chart is coming up, and we're going to have a little musical interlude and just take a minute to start looking at that, and then we're going to talk about it. So what are we looking at here? Before I, I talk, uh, I showed this chart last year, and I kind of have gotten tired of, of Da Vinci's masculine energy here. So if you would hit the button, we're going to replace him this year with Quan Yin with a nice pink border. That shows the emergence of the, of the masculine and feminine and the divine feminine rising. Chris Johnson this afternoon had several nice quotes from Elias showing what this feminine intuitive energy that's manifesting more so globally this century is like. Okay, so Quan Yin's now there in the center. <clears throat> the two things to look at here, the levels of reality, and if you can't see it down here, it just says levels of selfhood, and they're complementary. This is from Ken Wilber's book, A Theory of Everything, and it shows the world's major religious takes on ontology through Wilber's interpretation. This is his interpretation of that. And you'll notice there is a similar ontology or nature of being down here in the levels of selfhood, and there's a similar cosmology represented in the upper half. Now, the question is how, if we were to put Seth in here, what goes up top here, levels of reality? This is a question to the group, anyone? That's okay. She's very eager. Okay, so the question is levels of reality. What, 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 what part of the Seth material, the Seth map, do we stick up here in this part? Do, do, do. Frameworks. Frameworks of consciousness. Okay, they go up here. Framework one, framework two, three, four, and beyond, perhaps. It's precious little material on frameworks three and four in the Seth material. He mentions them briefly. He concentrated mostly on framework two in relation to framework one for practical reasons and that we can see. Down here, there's the ontology of Seth and Jane. We're going to look at that in a second. Uh, let's just, let's, let's do the Christian thing here. You know, body, psyche, soul, spirit, an increasing embrace, uh, the levels of reality, angels and, angel, angels and demons, a cataphatic God and an Apophatic God. Any ministers here <laughs> familiar with these terms? Increasing Godhead. Anyway, it's interesting that all of the world's religions have that. The point is that the Seth material is trying to express a similar reality that we've known for thousands of years. I think it's divisible and indivisible. Okay. The Trinity and then the all God. Okay, thank you for that. And that makes sense. And with the Taoists, we have the speakable Tao and then the unspeakable Tao as well. <laughs> Just escape. Just escape. Escape. Hit the escape key. Upper left. We are a multitude of selves, and the sooner we learn that, the better. And in that rich alliance of psychological aspects, 
lies the very secret of our practical operative stability from Psychic Politics by Jane Roberts. There are three books that comprise Jane's theoretical framework of aspect psychology. Highly underrated, highly underexplored in our community. I've read those books at least three or four times each, and each time, you know, you get more as you go through them. And the patterns through there, Jane did a wonderful job, that left brain analytical thing, of mapping her experience and providing a map. And yet, what's so beautiful is that her poetry dominates all three of these books. And the poetic expression of herself as a writer and poet, as opposed to a scientist, is, is dominant here. So this does not fit into academic study and uh, in any serious way in, in the present officially accepted way right now. What she attempted to do was analyze her experience with Seth and create a model for it. One more. OK, I use this iceberg metaphor to explain Jane's take on ontology. The focus personality, Seth called it an outer ego. The nuclear self, a subconscious mediating structure, a source self, which Seth called an inner ego entity. And there's different words that, that he used to describe these aspects. But these are all nested, simultaneous, holistically <coughs> nested aspects of all that is, which is what we are aspects of. So here, the tip of the iceberg is the focus personality. The surface level is the nuclear self. And the submerged part is the vast, vastness of the source self. Now, what is interesting as a theorist, this part, she only mentions it in Adventures in Consciousness and riffs on it and, and, and explicates it a little bit. And it's a structure that mediates all the probable selves. So I'll just use myself, Paul. All of the probable Pauls, which have bifurcated in theory, are managed by this structure that she called the nuclear self. And this is, this is a unique contribution to an integral psychology in terms of structures that we'll be looking at in, in a little while. And it's, it's always fascinating me. And she dropped it. And she never returned to it because I guess it wasn't as important. But trying to factor in probable selves for just the focus personality, forget parallel universes. You know, just come back to your own self and your own probables in parallel universes. And this structure is what she came up with. One more. Seth added something that's fairly esoteric and, and not well known in Dreams, Evolution, and Value Fulfillment. He used something that Rob said during a break. He called life clouds. Uh, and he, he used the term pyramid energy gestalts in the early sessions to represent a larger cluster of all of these layers together as a pyramid energy gestalt. So we don't get a lot of this in the Seth material because it's so abstract. Uh, perhaps Seth 2, Seth 3, Seth 4, it's there in some way, dips into these areas as seeds. And it gets into a larger cosmology uh, from dreams, evolution, and value fulfillment, the creation story.